That girl is talking to Senpai. That's unacceptable. We're going to have to get rid of her. But how? We could spread nasty rumors about her until the entire school is bullying her and she becomes so depressed that she stays home from school or commits suicide. We could stalk her until we see her breaking the school rules, then report her and get her expelled. We could commit murder, then plant the evidence on her to get her framed for the crime and get her arrested. We could stalk her until we find out if she likes any other boys, and try to set her up with another boy so that she leaves Senpai alone. All of these methods and more will be available in the final version of Yandere Sim. But for now, the method I'd like to demonstrate is a bit more... direct. Of course, should you choose to eliminate one of your rivals in this manner, you should make sure that there are no witnesses around. The way that an NPC will react to witnessing murder depends on their personality. This character has the coward personality type, so when they see a murder, they will run out of the school and call the cops. The timer at the bottom left shows you how much time is remaining until the cops arrive at school. When the police arrive, they will arrest you, but that's only if there is evidence of a murder. If you manage to clean up all of the evidence that you killed someone, there will be no way for anyone to even prove that a murder actually took place, and you'll get off scot-free. Today, I'm going to show you how to get away with murder in Yandere Sim. In the final version of the game, there should be several different ways to dispose of a corpse, but the method I'm going to show you right now is the incinerator. Don't worry, in the final version of the game, that animation should be vastly improved. In order to clean up blood, you're going to need a mop. You use the mop to clean up blood like this. It's a little tedious, but this is the price you have to pay if you want to be able to take someone's life and get away with it. You'll notice that as I clean up the blood, the mop is becoming more bloody. Now it's so bloody, it can't even mop up any more blood. When this happens, you have to dip the mop into some water to clean it. And now it's ready to go. If you ever lose track of the blood, or you don't know if there's still some blood around at school, you can't just, just can't find any more blood, but the bottom left corner of the screen tells you that there's still blood around, you can activate Yandere Vision to highlight any blood that you can go clean up. You should also be careful not to step in any pools of blood, because if you do, you'll leave behind bloody footprints that have to be cleaned up. As you can tell from the checklist at the bottom left corner of the screen, I have successfully cleaned up all of the blood in the school. The next step is to dispose of this bloody uniform I'm wearing. In the final version of the game, you should have to steal a clean uniform from a girl who's taking a shower in the girl's locker room. But for now, I just have this clean uniform lying on the ground for me. Also in the final version of the game, you should have to find a safe place to change your clothing, such as a utility closet or a bathroom stall. But for now, I'm just going to magically change my clothing on the spot. Now that I have some bloody clothing, I need to throw that away. I'm going to put it in the incinerator. The only thing left to do is just to dispose of the murder weapon. I'm also going to toss that into the incinerator. Now that the body, the uniform, and the weapon are in the incinerator, I just have to activate it. And all of the evidence goes up in smoke. Once you have activated the, in the incinerator, you won't be able to use it for another hour. That's about five minutes in real life. While the incinerator is active, you can't continue putting things into it. So at this point, it would be very unwise to kill any other students, because you wouldn't be able to dispose of the evidence. Not in the incinerator, at least. At this point, I've successfully gotten away with murder. All I have to do now is avoid committing any more crimes until the police arrive. 
I'm going to speed up time so you can see what happens once the cops get here. Once the police arrive, you lose control of the character. You don't get to keep on walking around. When the cops arrive at school, they put the school on lockdown. They don't let anybody go anywhere. No one's coming or going. They tell all the students to stay in their classrooms because, you know, there might be a murderer running around campus. That includes Yandere Chan. She can't go anywhere. And also, the police think that she's a murder suspect, so, you know, they're paying special attention to her. At this point, you, you can't go around like and fight the police or try to hide. It wouldn't work out. So you just lose control of the character at this point. Here you see the results of the police investigation in text form. In the final version of the game, I'd love to be able to show images or use 3D models or 3D animations to show the results of the police investigation. But that depends entirely on what kind of budget the game gets. So in this case, the cops couldn't find any evidence that a murder even took place. You know, they question Yandere Chan, but they can't they can't do anything. They can't take action. So in this in this instance, I got off scot free because I successfully eliminated all of the evidence. After the police investigation ends, you don't get to keep on playing like nothing happened. The teachers just send all the students home for the day. The school day just ends. When a school day ends, you progress to the next day of the week. Now, the girl that you murdered won't keep coming to school because she's dead. But the witness who saw you commit murder will still be coming to school. A witness that's seen you commit murder should probably treat you differently than other NPCs, depending on their personality. A coward would try to avoid you or run away from you if they see you. A student who is justice-minded might stalk you and try and catch you in the act of committing another crime so they can report you and get you arrested and see that justice is done. A social butterfly might uh, spread rumors about you to try and, you know, let people know what kind of person you really are, to tell people that you're a murderer. And that would damage your reputation for each day that she's allowed to be alive. Because of this, it's simply a good idea to eliminate anyone who has seen you committing murder. Now I'm going to demonstrate what would happen if you were to just leave a bunch of evidence lying around the school. I'm going to leave the corpse, a bloody uniform, and the murder weapon just lying around. And then I'm going to advance time to 6 p.m. and I'll show you what happens. At 6 p.m., that's when the school closes, so the teachers walk around and they look for any students that are still at school, and they say, hey, the school's closing, you gotta go home. As the teachers walk around, they're gonna find any corpses or bloody, bloody weapons that you left lying around, and then they're gonna call the cops. Now, when the cops arrive, it's the same story as before. They don't let anybody leave. You can't control the character. They investigate the school. And in this case, they found all of that evidence I left behind. So they were quickly able to link the crime to Yandere Chan and make an arrest. That's a game over. And that's everything I wanted to show off in this video. I've made a lot of other progress with the game. And if you'd like to see what other things are new since the last video I made, you can go visit the blog. The, there's a link to the blog in the video description below. I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to all of the wonderful people who leave so many supportive and encouraging comments, because it really helps me stay motivated to keep working on the game. I've been working on this game for 11 months, after all. I'd also like to give a very special thank you to all of the people who donate to the Patreon, it's only because of their financial support that I'm able to afford to spend this much time working on the game. So, big thanks to them. That's everything I wanted to show off in this video. Thank you very much for following the game's development, and I hope that the final product does not let you down. <laughs>